will we just get started then, Kelly? Yep. We will. So for, for everyone who is here, uh, hello and welcome to the very first Digital Skills for All live webinar. This is a bit of a, a mashup, if you like, of everything we've done before. Everything that we do, it could be stilling under the Level Up banner. So that's things like Digital Skills for Giddles, Bring Your Own Grown Up, Pre-Wired, etc. Obviously, we're living in strange times, so we've mashed them all up, we've brought them together, and we're doing this little live tutorial webinar. We think this should probably last around 20 minutes, maybe slightly longer. Uh, I, guess it depends. <clears throat> I guess it depends on how many questions you guys ask as well. If you want to ask any questions as we go along, use the chat button or the chat box and either Kelly, Ashley or Angus will try to help. Failing that, we will answer any questions in the comment section of our YouTube channel. Uh, this will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow morning. So you don't need to do this live. You can if you want. I realise not everyone has two devices. So if you don't want to do this live, just sit back, be inspired by Kelly and I, uh, and you can watch it tomorrow morning on YouTube and uh, and see how you get on then. Uh, so I haven't even said hello. Hello, I'm Barry. And I'm Kelly. Well done, Kelly. You did that without pausing too long. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so welcome to the First Digital Skills for All. Kelly, you can explain what we're going to do today. Um, so today we're going to get started making our first platform again. So we're using Make Code Arcade, which is a really good platform to use. Um, and we're going to be doing it through a tutorial. So you can see the um, URL is arcade.makecode.com. Um, and this is the homepage. So this is where we land and we'll just get started. So Barry, if I could get you to scroll down to tutorials. Okay. Yeah, just to explain to people, this is uh, this is my screen you're sh that you're watching. Uh, so everything that happens on the screen is me. And if I can do this, you can do it because I'm hopeless at this kind of thing. Uh, and I've even had a, a <laughs> we've even had a rehearsal. That's how bad it is. Right. Okay. Sorry, Kelly. Uh, no, that's I right. talk too much. Scroll down to tutorials. Scroll down to tutorials. Um, if the chat box or our pictures are in the way, you can move those around. So you might not be able to see everything, just move our faces around and you'll have a clear view. So in tutorials, we'll click that arrow on the right hand side of the screen. Okay. And we're going to choose the simple extensions tutorial. So you can see here, this is going to teach you the basics of extensions and how to create a platform. So if we start the tutorial, this takes a, a little while. That's because it's my home Wi-Fi, which uh, this can be a bit slow. <laughs> so this explains what a simple extension is. So once you get a bit more creative and um, have a bit more practice, you can um, create blocks of code and use that as an extension. So in this tutorial, things like making our sprite move um, have already been coded and are given to us in a nice little block. So there's a lot less for us to do to get started. So we'll just click OK. Right, so in all of these tutorials, the instructions are clear. On the left hand side, you have your simulator. The blocks you need will be in the center and in the right your workspace. So we'll get started. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a set my Korg block, and that's going to be in the Korg year extension. Yeah, so grab that top one out, set my Korg. I just click and drag that over, don't I? Just click and drag and drop it in. Okay. And you should see my Korg appear in your simulator on the left hand side. There he or she is. So there's Korgio, but Korgio can't do anything just yet. So we'll click next. Um, and now we're going to make Corgio move. So these are the blocks of code that have been pre-made, which makes it a lot easier. So let's go back to the Corgio block. And we'll grab a move my Corg left and right with the arrow keys. Okay. And um, you can test that. With my arrow keys. Uh, on the keyboard. You can this, on the oh, keyboard okay. or on the simulator. I'll use the simulator. There you go. So moving right, moving left. There's Korg moving left and right. And let's make him jump. So we'll go back to the Korgio. So this one here, make yep. my Korgio jump. Just drop it underneath. Um, something you can see in the tutorial, the little sort of instruction bit, is um, a little um, light bulb on top of the make code icon. 
no. <laughs> yeah. In, in the instructions, there where it says click to show a hint. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. So at any time during the tutorial, you can click that and it'll give you a hint. Ah, okay. So if I click this up arrow, it should jump now. Yeah. Ah, cool. Okay. Right. So we'll click next. So we're going to change Corgio to be animated because it'll be a lot more interesting if um, the picture changes. So we'll go to my cor go to the Corgio extension box and grab change image when my Korg is moving and just drop that in at the bottom. So now we've animated him. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Um, and we'll just click next. So this is the interesting part. This is where Barry's going to get creative. Uh -oh. uh, we're going to set up a tile map of platforms. So we're going to, um, oh, this is important. So in this instruction, it says you want to set the size to 20 times eight. So we need to remember that 20 times eight. So go to the scene block and grab the set tile map to, and yep, you can pop it there. Yep. Um, and then click inside that gray box. And so on the bottom left hand, yep, there we go. So do you remember what it was, Barry? 20 by eight. Yeah. So what's important now is when you put your platforms in, um, they've been put into a 20 by eight block. So if you change the size of that, you're gonna risk losing your platforms. Okay. So. Now is the fun bit. So now we get to draw a platform for my Korg to walk along. So you don't need to do the background or anything. You're purely doing the platforms that you want. Okay. So let's grab a nice floor block tile. So one of, one of these ones, anyone? Yep. You can also click that, that little arrow where it says forest and it gives you a range of options. Oh, okay. Other things. Well, I think I should go dungeon. I'm very dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, let's do that. Okay. Perfect. And then we'll just, um, so I like to do a floor and then a couple of platforms for Corgio to jump on. So just click and drag. Yep. Just click and drag. Do, do, do that right the way along to the end. Yeah. Whatever the end is. Oh. <laughs> um, do you see Barry on the bottom right hand side where it says done, you've got a uh, magnifying glasses. No, that's better. I'm using my fancy mouse. Okay. Okay, so there's our floor. Um, and then you can just, yeah, pop in a few platforms for Corgio to jump on. Now, I do believe you have used um, the treasure chest as okay. a, a floor tile. Okay, so this is great. Um, but we need to set these as walls because Corgio will be able to go right through them. So in the left-hand side above the word gallery, you'll see the wall icon. Yep, select that and highlight all of those tiles that you've set as platforms. So what this is going to do is um, if it's not a wall, Corgio will be able to walk through it. If it is a wall, Corgio will stand on top of it and it'll block Corgio from moving. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, Claire says the floor is treasure. The floor is treasure. Right, so those are our platforms. Uh, let's click done. And let's test that out on our simulator. Hey, and let's have a little jump. I'm going to use my arrows, my keyboard, or maybe either. Oh, cool. Perfect. So now we've got to jump. No, I'm rubbish at it. That's, I'm rubbish at it as well. I'm terrible at my own game. Okay, I've run out of space. Okay, so we've got a clear problem here. So what we're going to need th to do is have the camera follow Corgio along. So let's click next. Right, so we're going to make the camera follow my Korg. So, yeah. Yep, and drop that in on the bottom. Okay. And Try it and see if that makes a difference now. Yeah, let's see what that does. This, this requires me to actually play the game properly. Don't tell it. Hey, there we go. Oh. Cool. Great. Um, so next thing, let's click next. 
Okay, so this is uh, where your creative juices are going to flow as well. We're going to give Kogyo a tile that's going to be his goal. So when Kogyo gets to this tile, he's going to win. So let's go back to our tile map. Hey, back you to the tail map. Gray, the grey block just above make camera follow cork. Yeah. There you go. Right. And now you're going to draw your own tile. So if you go to my tiles next to gallery, okay. and then we're going to click the plus icon. And now you've got your own tile. So what I like to do is draw a flagpole because the flagpole seems like a good goal to get to. Okay. Um, but you could draw whatever you like. Oh, okay, a slight skew with flagpole. That's all right. On the left-hand side, above all the colors, um, there are tools to make things a bit easier. So there's the straight line tool, the full tool, arrays, and the circle. I'll go freehand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what can go wrong? Um, I'm, I'd recommend not having it black, though, because our background is currently black. Okay. If I just go over it, then. There you go. Uh, okay. Maybe we, can we make it a bit thicker? Just so it doesn't. Everyone, everyone's a critic. I thought it was going to be creative. There you go. How's that? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's there you go. It's even nice and straight for you, Kelly. Happy? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Thanks. Okay. So, can I go ahead and finish my flag? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not the best flag in the world, but. That's it. That's clearly a flag, at least. Listen, for someone who can't code and is colorblind, I'm happy with this. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's us. Is there a done option? Yep. There is done. Right, so now we're going to select that tile. And let's go to the end of your tile map um, and pop it in. There? Uh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Right, and then we can say done. Uh, right, and let's click next. Okay, this is the fun bit. So now this is where we're getting into the sort of gaming aspects of fun. So we're going to go to the scene block and we're going to choose on sprite of kind player overlaps location. Yep, so it's that big one. Now this doesn't need to slot in. You can just pop it underneath. Um, and we're going to you see where it says overlaps? Yeah. Yep. So if you click that, that gives you the range of tiles that you've um, used. So we'll click our flagpole and we'll go into the game section and game over. We'll drag that block out. And here? Yep. So currently that means when my cog overlaps with our flagpole, he's going to lose. So we'll Click that lose in that block. And now he's going to win. Ah, right. Okay. So let's test that out. Right. So I need to try and. I've got a terrible keyboard. Hey. <laughs> so what you can do now is you see the plus button that's there next to win. Yes. So if you click that, um, it gives you options. So you could either have a win with confetti, bubbles, starfield. Bubbles. Let me just try this. <laughs> I want to see how the bubbles go. My corgi can fly. There we go. The bubbles. So if you had a, a nice sort of underwater theme, you could um, incorporate the bubbles. Um, so if you click next, this is going to be the end of this tutorial. So when you click finish, um, a whole, there we go. So you can name it if you want. You don't need to. Uh, Barry's Corgi Adventure. Uh, so Eva says, I wonder how much the floor cost of this was real life. I know, but that would be good. Maybe in like the sort of second level of this game, we can use the open chests um, and just have towers of coins. Oh, Barry, I've got a plan. So let's close that. So is that it saved? Is that it saved? I don't think so. 
Oh, let's just do this thing. Okay. There we go. Right. So now you can see um, a whole lot more blocks have opened up in the center of the screen. So this will give you access to a whole lot of other things. What I'll show you quickly is on the top left hand corner, it says home and next to it, it says share. So if you create, yeah, one, one over to the right. There you go. So if you create your own game at home, which we'd like you to do, um, you can share it through this. So this will generate a URL and you can share the URL um, and we can all have a bash playing your game. Brilliant. So you just name it yep. and then you click. Do you click anything after you've named it? Uh, can you move that block up? Is there a done option at the bottom? That's my name. Hang on. If I move this block up, ah, there it is. It's hiding. Oh, thank you very much. So yeah, I, yeah, there we go. Thank you. That's public project. Yes, thank you. That's helpful. So there's the code. So you can um, uh, 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 URL. So you can copy that URL, share it with your friends, and then um, we can all have a bash playing it. Um, and if, they, if if you want, am I right in thinking that people create a game and they get their own URL for their game if they comment? In the YouTube video with that URL, that means we can all have a, a little go ourselves. Yeah, so we were thinking we'd set a challenge for um, the Easter weekend coming up. So if you could create your own platform game and share the URL with us, then in the next video, we'll highlight some of our favorite games that we've played. Um, and we can talk through the coding that was used in that. So like if Barry shares this game now, you'll be able to play the game. You'll also be able to see the code and edit the code for yourself. So you can take all of his hard work and then alter it and use it to your advantage. Um, if we click close quickly on, on the, that share project thing, um, and we can, now we can go into the scene block and we can set the background color to, or set the background image to. And if you choose that set background image, you can just pop that under set tile map. Yep, or above it. And click on that. So this is gonna be our background image. So seeing our floor is all treasure chests, should we make like mounds of gold coins in the background? You want me to be that creative to make mounds of gold coins? Or, or you could just colour the whole background yellow. Yeah, how do I do that? Uh, so then down one. Yep, so that's the full all tool. So that'll fill the whole background. There you go. Ah, okay. Excellent. Yeah. So that picture will remain static. So if you were to draw mountains of coins, um, as Corgio moves and as your platforms move, that background will just stay static. So that's a nice way to add sort of dimension to it. Another quick thing you can do, what I like to do just as a tip is, Barry, on the bottom right-hand corner, if you click the minus button, yeah, Eva, that's a good idea. Eva says, can you make lava? That would be cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. So if you click that minus button again, it makes your um, workspace a little bit clearer so you can move the blocks around. So if you move that on player on overlap block. Sorry, say that again, Kelly. Um, that um, on player overlap flag pole block. Oh, I need to make it bigger again now. So I can see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you if, oh, don't click in there because you'll take the flag out. But if you move that whole block to the side, it can just be a little clearer. And if you double click on it or right click on it and click duplicate, duplicate, drag that underneath. Um, now what you want to do is you change the flag. So overlaps, take away the flag and you can just choose that coral seeing we've already got it. And then change that to lose. Uh, then if you go into your tile map and add a piece of coral, when you touch it, you'll lose. So it's in the, the water thing. Yeah, classic. Okay, so if I put, see a, oh! Oh no. Okay, that's fine. We oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so, so you see you're on the full icon on the left-hand side. So if you change it to the pencil,
Okay, ignore my background missing from now. No, no, the, the background will still be there. Okay. And the only problem we might have now is there were a bunch of coral options. Let's just find out what happens. This yeah. could be for this could be for next week. Hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And I, I guess uh, whoever had said whoever had mentioned the floor, you could make the whole floor lava. Oh yeah. So so if you touch the floor, you lose. Eva, you know, why don't you do that? If you did that as your game and Corgio had to jump on all the platforms and avoid the lava floor, that would be a cool game. We could play that next week. Hey, so that was good. That that was a lot more simple than I thought it was going to be. And really, I am hopeless at this. So so that was quite cool. Uh, are we are, are are we going are we going to do more of this? Thing, Kelly, or what's next week? Are we going to expand yep. on this? Yep. So uh, Lewis has just asked, can you make movable characters? So in next week's video, we'll go from this game and I'll teach you how to make um, movable characters so we can make coins. The coins could give us points. Um, and I'll teach you how to animate them. So how you can make the coins spin, place them along your platforms and then make them spin. I'll also teach you how to animate um, Corgio. So we'll delete Corgio and um, build our own sprite from scratch and make our own sprite animate. So we'll do that next week. We'll get into more complex um, game aspects. But in the meantime, if you make your own game, we'd really like to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's brilliant. So that's, that's us. Uh, again, this will be uploaded to YouTube at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so you can watch it again if you're a glutton for punishment, but you can also watch it and uh, do it live, create your own uh, create your own platform game live. Tomorrow, uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Uh, there's loads of videos going up there. I think there's currently three videos a week, Kelly, is that right? Yep, we're putting up three videos a week. On Friday, we're putting up a video from Vanessa, who's at Codebase, one Codebase in Aberdeen, and she's gonna teach you how to make a bunny catcher game in Scratch. Excellent. Uh, so I think that's about it. So thank you very much for joining us. Again, in the comments, anything you'd like to see us do, any questions, ask away and we'll do our best to answer them. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you very much for, for joining us and uh, we hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye. Uh, Thanks so much, everyone. I can't wait to see your games. Bye. 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 Oh, everyone's saying bye in the comments. Bye. Bye. Bye.